My involvement in the Japanese accident, the Fukushima accident, um, began about 10 days after the accident when uh, we assembled a team in Tokyo to deal with um, what were potentially people who got very high doses of radiation. Unfortunately, that didn't materialize. There were no um, severely injured people. Now in Japan, the exposures uh, we are learning have been extremely small uh, compared to the nature of that accident. We would, you know, initially we're wondering what's going on and think the radiation exposure of the population might be pretty high. So as a precaution, many people were evacuated, but uh, they, their exposures are very, very small. Well, there are essentially three populations that were exposed to radiation after the Fukushima uh, accident. There, are, there of course, were the uh, workers who tried to uh, uh, keep the reactor cool and uh, contain the releases of radioactivity. They, in fact, received the highest exposures, although, fortunately, they were not as high as was experienced in the Chernobyl accident. None of the Fukushima uh, workers died. None of them received acute radiation sickness. So that was a very positive thing with regard to the Japanese government rotating the early workers to uh, cool the plant. The other concern, of course, would be the populations living around Fukushima because there were, in fact, releases of radioactivity into the environment. Again, not as great as Chernobyl, and in large part, the, the winds blew the right way. They blew to the ocean and not into populated areas, except in a few instances where they did and then did deposit uh, increased levels of radioactivity on the soil. The Japanese, though, uh, worked very effectively, and they evacuated the population the same day and the next day. So the population exposure was relatively low, and uh, there is very... Uh, limited uh, possibility that any adverse effects would be related to the radiation that was received. The doses were just too low. In uh, large part, they had, uh, the concern was the kids uh, who might have uh, inhaled or ingested radioactive iodines, and the measurements that were made in the children around Fukushima uh, right after the accident were very, very low. Most detected no levels.